So good evening, everyone, or good afternoon, where it depends where you are um, dialing in from. It is so good to see you all. And it feels ages, actually, because B and I weren't on the last call. And um, it does feel like a very long time. So um, it's really it feels it's good to be back, which is wonderful. So I first of all want to welcome all the new people because I know we've had new people signing up and that's always so exciting for us as well as seeing all the the faces that we recognize it is so good to see new people and you are very very welcome here this evening. So it's probably this is one of the things that we often forget to do is to introduce ourselves, so we are four women four decades i'm Rebecca the senior of the of the four. We've then got Natalie and then Rachel and then B. And for those of you that don't know, B is my daughter. So if if you hear her calling me mum, then that's you will kind of made the, made the connection. And it's extraordinary to think that we are now into year two of these talks. Can you believe it? Year two. It's absolutely amazing. And thank you to all of you who've been supporting us right from the start, because it's quite incredible how this has happened. And it seems that the more events we do, the more we have to say, and the more we have to talk about, we are not short of topics to discuss. And thank you to those that have messaged us as well to say, oh, could you do something on such and such? And I think this one actually was a request from someone on boundaries. So, um, we can't wait to get started this evening. We are casting the net wide this evening on boundaries, what they are and why they are so important to us, what they and what they mean. And we're going to be talking about people pleasing and the impact that that has on us, about the importance of staying true to ourselves and that saying no and what that means. We're, we're going to be talking as well about the importance of respecting not only our boundaries, but boundaries of other people as well, which is not something, in fact, that only came up in conversation over the last week, this importance of respecting other people's boundaries. And also there's something here, I think, as well about us all coming out of lockdown and the impact that that is having on us and our boundaries and what, and what it means for our boundaries. So there's lots that we're going to be covering this evening. Um, so I guess I just want to start by saying that it, it's so funny, isn't it? When you start have, thinking about something, you see it everywhere. It's like I remember I, I drive a Mini and before I thought of having a Mini, I didn't notice many Minis on the road. But as soon as I was thinking about it, every other car seemed to be a Mini. And a bit, a bit the same with boundaries. And I've been on social media this week and seen so many people talking about boundaries. Mm -hmm. And one of the, I listened to an absolutely wonderful Instagram live between the author Lovey. I don't know whether you've heard of her, but she's just written a book called Professional Troublemaker, which is on my list because I think what a flipping amazing title that is for a book, Professional Troublemaker. She was in conversation with Elizabeth Gilbert and Lovey was talking about drawing a, a boundary meant um, it was drawing a, ba a boundary around what is sacred to you and you are in the center of that boundary and it can't it's kind of giving me goosebumps again now because it's it was treating it with such respect that she was calling it sacred and Imagine if we did that with the stuff that was important to us, that we drew that boundary around ourselves and treated it as if it was sacred. So that, that, that was the first thing. Then there's a wonderful human being called Jeffrey Marsh, who is a non-binary trans person who, if you've, if you've not seen him or if you don't follow him, then get onto Instagram because he is just joy. He is just joy in human form and he was talking uh, I think it was ye yesterday or the day before about boundaries and he said a boundary is a choice that I make so that my life is more pleasant now and and I and I love that because it was this is about the fluidity of boundaries they're not rigid and firm but they can change and adapt to suit what's important to us in the moment and I I think that that's, that's something really good to explore. 
And then, of course, the other one, which is absolutely flipping massive, and I know we're going to talk, well, I hope we're going to talk about it, is the amazing Billie Eilish and what has been kicking off in the papers over the last few days. Um, and how strict and strong and firm her boundaries are, and she's changed them, and that's okay. But the papers, the press, the, the patriarchy do not like that. And they are taking her down because of it. And, and I just think she's the most extraordinary 19 year old. She had boundaries around, she wore baggy clothes. She was a child. She was protecting herself. She, she, she is so famous that she didn't want people seeing her body because she was a child. And here she is now, she's a, she's a woman and she is choosing if you've if you've not if you don't know what I'm talking about, then have a look at Billie Eilish and Vogue, because she is in the most amazing, beautiful lingerie, basically, and she is still strong within her boundaries about what's important for her. So that's kind of a big one for me. You can tell already. <laughs> and and here's the thing, and this is this is why I feel so kind of passionate about this particular thing because on numerous occasions in my life I have been told you've changed all right said like that and what what what's really going on there is that people are, is what I'm saying is yes I have changed I'm no longer living my life on your terms or to your expectations and I think that to me is one of the things, I think that's why this Billie Eilish thing feels so important for me is because that feels really important that people expect us to stay the same so that they can be comfortable in their life with the way that things are. But boundaries, that, that was me setting a boundary on that as well, that this is my life. So, over to you, ladies. <laughs> Natalie, you're still muted. Unmuted now. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I love that. And thank you for that, that interaction, introduction and your passion. <laughs> um, I read something as I was sort of like, like starting to think about this talk and what would be important to share and something stood out to me is that saying no to something or someone when it's important to us is saying yes to ourselves and um yeah why, why do we why do we struggle sometimes to say yes to ourselves and pay attention to our needs and put boundaries in and say what we need without guilt. No, so I, 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 me too, like, you know, and I think I'm learning to say what I need more and get clearer on what's important to me. And I think previously in my life, I'd, I'd kind of sought validation from others and needed that to feel secure and safe in myself. And I think what I'm, seeing more and more now is that you know I have that worth regardless of what anyone makes of it you know that is innate to me my birthright is 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 my is my worth and I don't need to people please in order to get it and I think that's that's the that's the sticky path I was walking before sometimes to be accepted or be validated I would you know maybe not be so clear on my boundaries and I, I still acknowledge that you know I'm learning all the time but the more I get clear with what how I spend my time and my energy and what I welcome in my life and what I don't the more I thrive in that environment because I'm 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 doing what you said, Rebecca. I'm sort of like looking to see what's what's sacred and and valuing that. Isn't it so interesting that so often that can be seen as being selfish and self-centered 
and how I think that's maybe why we retreat from it or one of the kind of long list of fears we have um like when I was thinking about it like what what is it why is it that we struggle to put these boundaries in place and I think like it's it's so beautiful what you've both said about kind of having our selves at the center but isn't it crazy that society has taught us that that is something that we shouldn't do because we should be putting everyone else at the center and um making sure that that their needs are tended to that we are giving and that we are being thoughtful and it's it's kind of i mean we've we talk about this a lot in other talks but how our our own needs and well-being gets bumped down the list but actually like how that that changes so much when we we put ourselves at the top and at the center and it, it kind of feels like this protective bubble kind of like this um what they call those zorbing balls this it's almost like this kind of force field around us to to protect our own energy and our well-being because when we I think when we don't have like like you were just saying Natalie like when we don't have those boundaries we we lose sight we lose sight of what being true to ourselves actually means I think and when we are just kind of constantly trying to trying to meet other other people's expectations and all of those other kind of external factors which are changing all the time it's and it becomes so almost disorientating it's like what's our what's our true north because all of like I mean what what society says what fashion industry is telling us what our our family and friends are telling us our boss all of these these external things they change on a daily basis like one day oh we lost B. but I loved what she was saying there about force field and as she was saying it I was thinking yeah and 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 actually as we're protecting that force field for ourselves you know, if we talk about the needs of others and being of service to others and contributing in the world and radiating um, energy and positivity and permission to others to do the same, it, it feels that, that that force field is, is very powerful. Yes. It, it, absolutely and and again it's uh, there's modeling here something around modeling isn't there and i'm thinking if we're if we're putting ourselves further down the list and kind of stamping allowing others to stamp on on kind of what we feel is sacred then what are we teaching certainly teaching our children and those around us about how how we are in the world about being how we treat each other and certainly respect ourselves because i think that's one of the things isn't it here as well around the importance of boundaries it's about do i respect myself enough to actually put this boundary in place do i um you know some, some, that thing that jeffrey marsh said about making my life more pleasant by putting that boundary in place you know and one of my the, you know one of, as you guys know one of my boundaries has been that I don't work on Wednesdays and I'm very aware that this is Wednesday all right but once a month I I love doing these calls and it just feels that Wednesday is the right day to do this but I don't work on Wednesdays because I love sewing needle craft and all of that kind of stuff and but I was shoehorning it in around kind of dead times, 
like late Sunday evening or maybe you know of an evening when the light wasn't great but I was I just didn't have time to do it any other time and then I thought but I'm my own boss I can I can do what I want here so I decided that Wednesday was going to be my day for doing what I really what brings me joy what nourishes me and fills me up so that that means I work Monday Tuesday Thursday Friday and the old Wednesday evening and and then because I have respected myself, I can then show up for my clients and for my work fully nourished. And that kind of, uh, and to be absolutely honest, it took a while. It really took a while and it took B to say, because we, B and I work together for those of you that don't know um, and obviously we've got a shared um, email address and she'd go yeah don't you even go near those emails today mum you know but it, it took a while and it took practice but now I'm much clearer when somebody says oh yes I could do Wednesday no I don't work Wednesday and there's no I'm sorry either I'm sorry I don't I don't there's there's none of that I don't work Wednesdays that was going to be my next question because I remember when you started doing that, Rebecca, because I don't think it was for the whole year that we've been doing this into year two. I think that was quite a late, it was part way through our year of four women, four decades where you made that call to say, I'm not going to work this day. And I remember you saying it was difficult to adjust to that. And it's it's kind of, for those other, you know, you've, we've talked before about we all run our own business and and I know many people on this call do as well or, or are working or just have multiple levels of responsibility and I'll often sit in my life and go I'm just so tired <laughs> why am I so tired and then if I really gave myself a minute or just thought about it I go oh yeah Rach you're actually in charge of your own schedule here and you might be tired because possibly there's too many things in your diary that you know aside from the, the life stuff that we all have to do and whatever our responsibilities are, I just think I'm still building this other part of my schedule in my life and that's still impacting my levels of energy. So why don't I put that to the top of the list? It seems to be, I'll be inconvenient to you if I don't say yes immediately or do what you need or, or give you what you need immediately. And one of the things I've been exploring with my three esteemed coaches here is this pattern that I recently uncovered since we started talking about this this subject and just why are we so tired or Natalie's example on the talk you know a few a few months ago that she'd recently fallen over I fell down the stairs at Christmas you know we were reaching a point where it's like okay there are too many signs in the universe saying ladies just slow down chill out time off lie down lights off um all of these things kept happening in life going yeah you you might need to take a rest and one of the patterns i realized was that in the last couple of months maybe the last three months i've been two occasions where i've taken on pieces of work that in hindsight i've realized i probably shouldn't have said yes to them and i was sharing this with the other three just saying you know i've realized that what happens is if i'm in doubt about whether i should or i shouldn't do something or take something or not take something if I'm in doubt, I give, I say yes. I just immediately say yes, like a default setting. Want to do this piece of work? Yes. And so through exploring this with, with um, Rebecca, Natalie and B, I've realized that my new pattern needs to be, if in doubt, pause. And I now keep a post-it note next to my computer, which says, is it an immediate yes? Then say yes. Do I need more clarity? Then ask a question. If I'm uncomfortable, go away and think about it. And I have to have that. This is a new thing for me to uncover. I have to have that next to my computer so that when somebody's asking me to do something to do with my role, to do with my work, I don't immediately jump for the yes if I need more clarity or if I'm uncomfortable. And I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm 40 now. I hit the 40s. Um, I, how do I not know this stuff that I just need to pause? I don't need to say yes straight away. And I can be inconvenient to you in that way. And actually, it's not inconvenient. That, that's mm. such an important word there, isn't it? Inconvenient, because I think that's one of the reasons that we struggle with boundaries. We don't like to be inconvenient to others. Yeah. Mm. 
that. Oh, hello, hello. you're back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> and I was interested, um, Rachel, like when you first started do that, started to do that and follow the the wisdom of the post-it. Yeah. What was what was that like to start off with? It is incredibly uncomfortable, um, because I found I found myself originally kind of saying let me think about it, but almost in this, but I'm hopeful it will be a yes. Like I don't almost, that was the unspoken vibe I was giving off. And now I, I kind of, if I'm in doubt, I pause with even the live conversation happening. And I just say, I need to go back to my, and I either say my diary or my week, or I just need to review where I'm up to with this month and then come back, I'll come back to you at a later date. But it's so, if I'm, if I'm staying in the conversation, I find it even harder. But even today, I said to you guys before we came on the call, um, somebody's just contacted me and said, I'm free Thursdays and Fridays. I haven't met you, but I need to have a conversation about coaching. Can you fit me in this week? And so I'm in my head, in my life going, well, maybe I could fit them in Friday evening because I have a space for Friday evening, already knowing that this week I am at capacity work-wise. So rather than just pausing, I, I felt the need to go back immediately to, in, to this email to say, Yes, of course, Friday at 8 p.m., which is for me the worst possible time to meet anybody. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, but without the post it note or without the if in doubt pause, I would have already booked that person in. And I, it's okay to make him or her wait. And I, I'm still learning this. It's okay if I need to make you wait if you have, if you're making a request of me. It's really hard. I still find it really hard. That's, yeah I mean the, the power of the pause is amazing really isn't it and just like before we came on um on the call we were talking about um uh coming off autopilot or Nassie was talking about coming off autopilot and it just goes to show like how much of this stuff we just is just programmed into us it's like we are this kind of people pleasing do not disappoint anyone do not let anyone down um has just been so kind of deep deep rooted that we're not even thinking about it it's just this sort of knee-jerk reaction that it's saying yes and whether it's around work or socializing or with uh family or whatever it might be that it's yeah it's this I, I don't want to let other people down or or from a social social perspective it might be I don't want to miss out either even though we have we might have this this deep down gut feeling that is telling us to stay in or just to sleep or whatever it might be um because yeah it's just this whole list of fears isn't it the fear of the what if yeah but what if this person then think that, the, that thinks this about me or what if um they think that I'm no fun or what if they think that I'm blah 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 like it just goes on forever and ever doesn't it and so it's like but if we say yes then we mitigate all of those things we, we kind of prevent all of those things from from happening but actually like what's what's the cost of that because I think the, when we when we feel like we're not able to say no I certainly start to feel resentful mm. even though it's me that's making the choice to say yes it's like I'm saying yes, but it's like, oh, but I didn't, I didn't want to say that. Or, oh my God, I'm so knackered now because I just keep saying yes. And it's almost like we kind of forget that we actually have a choice. But because we're, we're not on autopilot all the time, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like that a lot of the time. Or it certainly doesn't for me. So I think the taking that pause is something that I've started to do as well. And it's, it's amazing because it also allows us to start to get in touch with what feels warm. Like we talk a lot in our talks about what feels warm or cold and actually how that's how we make decisions now. And I think just allowing ourselves that 
that time and space, that kind of judgment free time and space to, yeah, start to feel, get in touch with how it actually like feels in our body because our bodies are amazing at giving us signals um, as to how something or whether something feels right or not. So, yeah, I mean, for me, that's that's been huge, too. And it's back, it's coming back to respect again, isn't it? You know, having ourselves in that sacred circle where we respect ourselves. Um, but the, wh what about the thing I mentioned at, um, in the introduction about respecting other people's boundaries as well, because that's a really interesting one, isn't it? We had a really interesting kind of conversation about that, that we can inadvertently be pushing other people's boundaries and we've be you were talking about this around you know kind of if somebody's not available in a work mm. context because of whatever reason they might be on holiday or something and yet we but we need an answer from them why aren't they on holiday why, why they should be responding and it's like we can we can do that without even noticing it, because again, mm. that's the autopilot. Mm. But I think the more that we can become conscious of our own boundaries, our own respect, and what's sacred to us, that we can start to see it and recognize it more and more in other people, and then respect them for that. Mm. And yeah. I think Rebecca, what you're saying here as well about the fluidity of it all. Yeah. So let's say we meet today and you, you know, we uncover just through conversation or how do we want to be together today? What's the most useful way of our, for our time or how can we be friends today? We might uncover each other's boundaries and know what our areas of mm -hmm. okay are. And then tomorrow I need to understand that when I see you again, things might be completely different. Um, and I had a, I read an Alice in Wonderland quote to a client today about, you know, I knew who I was when I woke up, but I feel like I've changed many times since. And yeah. I'm like, I love that because I have a boundary today and I might need a boundary in my diary in my life. And then tomorrow I might feel totally different about that. And I might be able to work twice as long with less free time, with whatever, whatever. It will change all the time. And I need to understand that you will do that too. And mm -hmm. that we just have to meet live and go, where are we? what's true, what's needed, and, and how, do we, how do we be here today? Um, and, you know, hopefully not treading on one another accidentally, because sometimes that's unconsciously done. Mm. I'm going to open up the chat. Can I do that now, Natalie, or are you? I think you can. Everyone, oh, maybe it wasn't even shut. <laughs> um, <laughs> chat away. <laughs> what I was going to say, I, I will, I've opened it up now. So the chat is open. And while you're thinking if there's a question yep. you want to ask or, or, or a comment to make, what something I'm seeing is actually to say what I need as well. Yeah. Because I think sometimes what was happening is I was not getting what I needed and starting to feel anger and resentment or feeling burnt out, burnt out. Um, or sapped of energy as a minimum. Um, but I actually was expecting people to be mind readers and not knowing what I need, you know. So, so a really like kind of live example that's happened in, you know, within the last six months is when we were all locked in the house, me and, and my family, um, you know, I just wasn't getting any space. It was all very claustrophobic and you know, I, I didn't tweak what what it was straight away, what it was that was leading to this kind of low level resentment. Um, and then I, and then I worked out, actually, I do need some space for me and it doesn't have to be a long time, but I need to go out and have a walk by myself or I need to shut myself in a room and just read like. But unless I said that out loud, no one was going to know. And, 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 I, and I, you know, kind of shared it and we put some sort of measures in place where that happened. And then actually we're, we're okay now, but, but it's not just identifying it, but I think it's actually saying it. And, and I think the reality is we, you know, we might be fearful or uncomfortable of that, but it was like really reasonable. 
Um, so I think there's something in that as well as actually saying saying what we need out loud and not mm. expecting people to um, intuitively understand it. But and asking other people what they need. Yeah. Because like so much of it, like you say, is just like we assume people we 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 assume that people know what we need, but then we also it's again it's it's flipping it around. How are we how are we ensuring that for other people as well? And it's like so much of it comes down to communication and um yeah, being really clear on on what we need and being clear with people that we are gonna change and that it's not these these things aren't fixed. So it's like maybe starting to kind of become aware of what expectations we have for other people um, as well as ourselves because I certainly kind of until relatively recently didn't even think about boundaries as being something that isn't fixed <laughs> so actually like I've I can now give myself permission to to be flexible with my boundaries and be okay with that and know that that might feel weird to other people, but actually that is okay. Like I'm not responsible. I'm not, I'm not responsible for other people's reaction to my boundaries. I can't control how they deal with, deal with that. And actually it's not any of our responsibilities to do that. We can, we're only ever in control of what, what we do. Um, but I think, one of the I read something the other day that I absolutely love and it kind of goes back to um an issue we've talked about a lot around kind of caring too much about what people think and it's it goes along the lines of just because someone reacts badly if we say no it doesn't mean that we should have said yes and I think that's that is just so so important because it kind of goes back to what we were saying at the start that we have all these we change our behavior and we 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 don't put in place any of these boundaries and we don't say no because we are so fearful of what other people are going to think or say or do but actually like what if what if that doesn't actually matter and what if actually we have no control over that anyway like people are going to react completely differently whatever we do so why don't we just take that out of the equation? And if we are true to ourselves, and if we are tuning into what is warm and feels right for us, surely that is the best thing and the only thing that we can do. Um, and surely that's what we would want other people to do as well, right? There's because because the opposite because of not doing that we become martyrs. And you know I I remember, B you probably remember this when you were younger. You know I was a classic martyr, awful, so resentful. No 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 it's fine I'll do it. You know clearing the table loading the dishwasher. No 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 it's fine I'll do it I'll tidy your room I'll do the feeling it's a spitting under my breath at everyone. And what was the atmosphere like in the house? Awful at time. I mean, it wasn't like this all the time, but, but you know. I'm painting a very kind of <laughs> bad picture of my childhood. <laughs> but it, it, it was, and it's like, I remember writing a blog probably a decade ago now saying, you know, there is no special place in heaven for worn out superheroes, <laughs> you know, and it's, that's so true. This, you know, martyrdom is overrated, really is. And what We've do you got... get out of that? Sorry? And what do you get out of that? Well, absolutely nothing, really. Because it's not even a feeling of, well, maybe it's a feeling of satisfaction that everybody else is pissed off with you now as well. I don't know, there's something. <laughs> it's horrible. Human beings, human beings are so weird, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
we've got we've got two lovely comments so far i'm going to read them out because um this won't show up on the recording so jessica says i don't have a no button mm. i have that call at 5 p.m friday that rachel mentioned as someone had to see me this week my strong amiable style has to please others and the please me and make sure i'm okay never comes into it I am my own worst enemy and the impact is always on me and not others. I annoy myself. <laughs> so what are you going to do about it, Jessica? <laughs> um, and Louise says, I am a sucker for seeing space in my diary at work and planning things in or saying yes, leaving my day crazy busy. And then I think, why have I done that? And how effective was I actually during that time? I need to focus on quality rather than quantity, I think. You know, mm. that is so true. This, you know, um, grafting all the time, all the time, all the time. We are ineffective that way. Mm. Rest is so important. Space is so important. Mm. Yeah. And Jules says, is it maybe recognition, may, is it about recognition maybe being a martyr? Yeah. Yeah, so, so much of this comes down to, like, like, as we were saying um, earlier about being on autopilot, that we, we don't realize we're doing this <laughs> most of the time, I don't think. Um, maybe you were aware, aware mum, that you were being a martyr. <laughs> just were enjoying it <laughs> there were times i mean who would we'll, we'll doubt yeah, could probably do with some counseling on that <laughs> but i think like yeah absolutely awareness recognition is like it's the, the first step isn't it yeah if we're not aware of what's going on that we can't do anything about it so actually starting to become aware of yeah what what are we what are we doing are we being a martyr are we always saying yes like starting to become aware of that is huge because I think when we when it when it is on autopilot all the time we don't we don't think about it we don't even notice it so kind of starting to do some of that self-reflection and in a completely non-judgmental way I should add yeah. um I think is yeah it's definitely the first step yeah and that and that bit i of think what's interesting as well is you know this idea that sorry if i just talked over you natalie um not sorry uh what's interesting is if you know this, these people that have to see us this week i just think well that means we're worth seeing so that means we're worth protecting and this idea of you know us being sacred in the middle of all that if somebody says you know i must see you this week i'm going to be like well actually pause because I'll jump at that or, you know, there's a sacred group of people. So these, you know, be Rebecca and Natalie, if any one of these guys call me up on Friday night at 8 p.m., which is apparently my worst possible time to meet anyone, I would always make time. So I have a sacred group of people, a number of people on this call. Are, you know, there are people, of course, I'm going to take the call. Of course, I'm going to make time for you. Beyond that, I don't know whether it's worth us all pausing and looking at, can I just pause this request coming in? And actually, because I'm so used to default yes, can I just pause here and go, is this, is this part of my sacred group or my sacred self? Is this serving what I need this week um, and how I feel this week? And actually, if I just did a quick body scan, which again sounds incredibly exciting, but just head to toe, how do I physically feel right now? Because I know today getting this email in from this person who needs to see me who doesn't know me, I'm already ready for my working week to finish on Friday. I like I'm tired and I'm so pleased to be here. This gives me energy and joy and all good things. But I know that my work will be done on Friday at four and I can't take it. I should not. and I don't want to take one anymore. But this this pull or this default. Well, of course, I'll make time because they've asked me this week. So I will try to be convenient to the other person. That stuff's got to change. Um, and to Natalie's point, you know, saying what we need, it sounds so obvious if you sit and think about that sentence for a minute Rachel just say what you need in the situation that you're in but even today I've been in a lot a lot of times this week um clients with gender irrelevant but lots of male executives this week interestingly and, and one of the themes that came up out of this week's conversations have been you know I'm hopeful that so and so will fall out of this conversation that I have with 
CEO. And I'm like, there's a lot of hope in these conversations. Why don't you just say what you need? <laughs> and it's happening everywhere. We're, there's something going on with every level of seniority, every sector, whether you work, whether you don't. Like, we're just not well practiced at saying, actually, this is where I'm at today and this is what I need. And other days I won't have anything that I need to say to you that I need. But just, just saying that out loud is, I think, pretty revolutionary based on my experience so far in life and people finding it quite difficult to do that. Janet, Janet says, I love this. Um, I said no to someone a few weeks ago who put a meeting in my work calendar at very short notice. It was going to interfere with my plans for completing a task. So I checked on what the topic was and how urgent it was. I agreed to meet the following week instead. She has never rescheduled the meeting, so it can't have been that important after all. And that reminds me of emails that respond, you know, it's like respond all, because it's easier to do that than it is to actually select the person that you need to send it to. So you end up feeling that you've got, you've been away for three days and you come back and you've got 25,000 emails and none of them are relevant, really. So there's something there about maybe boundaries and say, I don't know, I mean, I, I don't work in an office in that scenario, but just what, what could be done about that, maybe? Yeah, and on that, I think, you know, in terms of leadership, there's a really important thing about setting your own boundaries and, and building a culture that's healthy and doesn't have them kind of toxic behaviors. Like when I'm in my coaching and organizations, I'm seeing more and more kind of a sense of always on culture yes. and people feeling bad when an email comes in and you know setting boundaries but I think I think it's I think it's key and I think it needs to sort of be role modeled from mm -hmm. above as well so everyone remains kind of healthy and um yeah I just think that is you know, otherwise, what do we do? We just keep passing the baton. We keep um, being available and, you know, we get more resentment, resentment, anger, burnout. We're not operating well. And I think we come back to that lovely kind of force field B was talking about um, before. If we don't, you know, we're just depleted. We're less service to ourselves or anyone else. And 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 when that isn't protected, we just get lost in term in lost in terms of our inner guidance system that's kind of pointing us to how to be true to ourselves. We lose sight of what's important, and we feel less resourced to look after ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, gosh, that that point about me always being on is so true, and I think particularly true given what what everything that's been happening over the last the last year when people can't physically leave the office in a kind of a work situation so yeah like people are people are being contacted at all hours and it's like well we you haven't got a commute now so you've got an extra hour each side of the day which is which is crazy and then that kind of bleeds into the weekend as well. I've got plenty of friends who are completely burnt out because, because of the lack of those boundaries that, but because it has become part of the culture, it, it doesn't feel like it can be changed. And it's those expectations that you need to be available all the time, which is, which can be, become so dangerous because because it's it's our health and well-being if you if you're on all the time or kind of even just kind of being on um being on kind of high alert <laughs> that actually I could be contacted um on the weekend or I could be contacted in the evening or actually I should just keep my laptop on until 9 p.m at night just in case something comes in that's not that's not allowing yourself to rest. That is still being in on mode. And it's, it can just, it can just be so damaging. Um, but it, it's, it's so interesting because it, 
I think so often it can feel like that we don't have a choice that we we but we have to work we have to get all of this work done or like we just have we just have to we haven't got a choice like what what would happen if if I didn't but actually it's like well actually what, like what's the answer to that question like what would actually happen if if we stopped making ourselves available and I think we maybe don't explore that or maybe we're kind of fearful of exploring that um because it then goes back to that list of what other people will think but actually like, the world's not gonna implode um but I, I don't know I think there's something around that that not wanting to to rock the boat and we talked about this the other day in our in our group not wanting to be that that kind of the the first person to to start to almost push back a bit because that can feel quite daunting in a way I think one of my clients who I adore I adore them all but he was going on a water sports holiday with his family and I remember him saying to me so I've said to my boss who you know there's this big deal going through and I need to be I need to be on 24 um, 7 but I've just said to my boss you know when I'm in the water I won't be able to check so he said so I just intend on <laughs> staying in the water with my sons for seven days and I think yeah fair enough I mean it's not practical really but it's it was just a lovely humorous moment but the biggest thing is my god you know we have to somewhere unless it's life-threatening work of course like within reason what is what's going to happen if you actually pushed back if we push back a bit more if I don't I might not even respond to this person today saying they need to see me this way this straight he doesn't know me I know I feel, I feel like I'm growing live on the call and um, but I just think what what would happen if we just start to play a little bit and and we were talking before we came on about you know we're learning as we say to you every time we are really trying to explore this stuff we also support each other throughout the week so we're consciously paying attention to this conversation and whatever it is that we're exploring this week or this month and this just pushing back or suggesting that we don't answer straight away or suggesting that we put ourselves first for a bit we're really exploring that but what are the practical things we could all go away and try and I wonder if one of them is pausing and thinking through what would happen if what would happen if I said are you sure that's the deadline can I check this is exactly what you need is it really urgent um or you know a bit more rebel I'm just not going to reply to that today and if it's really urgent they'll call and just see what response you get in different places because I think otherwise we're all guilty of falling into either it's just quicker if I do it myself which is a big one for most of us I see quite a lot of nods there um or you know I don't want to be inconvenient and what will they think if I can't behave in this way or do what they need or say yes to the request and let's just play with not doing exactly what we assume they're expecting all the time and seeing where that gets us mm. radical stay in the water love that just stay, stay in, in the water i think that's so good it was so good um louise well, louise says i read something the other week about writing a list of stuff that you will never do again because it does not add any value yeah. quite a good way of freeing up time and getting out of those unconscious habits maybe that's so interesting how much do we do that is on autopilot that adds no value at all yeah. that, that is joyless as well yeah. and we just do it because we've always done it yeah. so interesting bit of a spring clean going on yeah. and then jessica uh, i love this this topic is really hard to me as i ooh, hang on uh, as i realize i don't set my own boundaries i also say to my team that if they need me on my day off that is okay to get in touch so that they're okay again <laughs> always others over myself natalie i might need more help <laughs> any time jessica <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, but this is like, this is when, see, all we try and do on these calls is, is raise awareness because it's mm -hmm. it, when we spot this, well, we can't unspot that then, can we? We've seen it and, well, we might choose not to do anything differently or we might say, well, hang on, what, what is this, what is this saying? 
And this is about intercepting the autopilot and our autopilots are there. They're, you know, we've, we've developed them and honed them over many years and they're our, our patterns and our habits, but they can change. They're also not truth, you know, it's just what we've got into our habits and and the thing is when we do something different it can feel uncomfortable like Rachel was saying when she started with that post-it note and her filtering system as to whether to pause when she wasn't sure about saying yes and I think we sometimes can misinterpret that discomfort that we're going in the wrong direction because mm -hmm. we don't like to feel discomfort we don't tolerate it very well and then we can back off or we think, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Uh, and what I see more and more is that discomfort is um, it's an opportunity to learn and grow. And very often we can do the thing that feels uncomfortable, survive to tell the tale. And, you know, it leads us to something much, much richer. Um, you know, the, you know, <laughs> The, re the reality is just so much kinder than the fearful thinking we have, or at least it seems to be in my experience. Yeah. And, and speaking of which, one of the other, the, one of the things that I wanted to say, which I only really just thought about before when we were having a little pre-meet was around setting boundaries with this voice in our head this inner critic in our head the one that likes to uh, kind of spout all of these these irrational fears and insecurities this mad woman in the attic as as we like to call it because so often we let we let that voice run the show and I think certainly for me, I've I've always I've always kind of seen boundaries as something that we set with things around us, kind of physical things, whether it's people or um, uh, pets or work or um, all of those things that surround us. But actually, what boundaries are we putting in place for ourselves and? And how much of this, this noise are we, are we tolerating and giving airtime to? I think that's, I mean, that feels quite different and quite, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe radical in a way. But it just kind of occurred to me before the call that actually, why are we giving that, that inner critic such a long leash? Why do we give us so much airtime? What, what can we do to actually put some, some boundaries in place so that we are, we are protecting our well-being and our energy? It's like limiting, limiting exposure to toxic energy. And I think a lot of that can come from our own heads. We were also talking the other day about kind of limiting how much uh, we expose ourselves to social media and news and maybe toxic people but actually the I think so much of so much of that toxic energy can actually come from this mad woman in the attic this this voice in our head so that that's definitely something that is new for me and is something that I'm definitely going to explore more I think everything that we've said definitely still applies to that, whether it's the pause um, or kind of tuning into how we're feeling um, that can start to give us a guide and kind of guide us to, to make decisions about how much we want to actually listen to. I don't know whether that's something that you guys have started to explore. Well, I was just thinking as you were saying that, B, before you said it on the call, I hadn't realised that I had a choice, that I had an ability to put boundaries around the inner critic or the voice in my head that goes pipe down, Rach. 
Um, and what what's maybe may have been happening in my life, which I hadn't realized, is almost like I go through my day and I interact with people and I'm a mother and I live my life and I do my things. But if that voice kicks off, I must kind of subconsciously be going, oh, course, sorry, I haven't, yeah, I haven't realized you hadn't finished. So I'll just let the abuse carry on. Like, oh, so, I'm so sorry. I'm inconveniently going on with my day and I had interrupted you and all of the negative chat you want to give me. I'm looking up, she's clearly above my head, in my head. And actually I didn't realize I could go, you know, thanks so much for trying to kick me while I'm on the, but could you pipe down for now? And I just hadn't realized until B said that today that I could just bound you that a little bit. So thank you, B, forever learning in your presence. And I just didn't realize. Uh -huh. Again, it's just default. I'm so sorry, inner critic. Do take the floor. You know, I'll listen to you first and then I'll just start whatever I'm doing next on the back foot because that's just always more fun. What are we doing? Anyway, yeah. thank you, B. I think I've certainly, my, maybe the, the, the approach that I've taken to the inner critic has been sort of batting it away as as it comes but actually having may, maybe that's one to to have more firm and fixed boundaries around and the flexible the flexible flexible boundaries can be uh, kept for for other things but I feel like being really firm and saying no <laughs> to who to that um I think is vital because I think so much of our our own energy is sapped by that voice and it just gets in the way of of so much of what we want to do so maybe that's the kind of well for me anyway that feels like priority number one <laughs> Kind of get getting my own house in order almost and then starting to to look around me and and seeing what what else comes comes on that list yeah and mm -hmm. what occurs to me to say on that is you you know sometimes it can be hard to spot what is true and what is the inner critic and mm -hmm. i think same times we might underestimate that we're already been on a real journey exploring the the difference um between when we feel we're in clarity and we've got a good quality of thinking and we're more in line with reality and when we slip into um you know that more kind of self-critic voice where we um, have got like more chaotic thinking it's like when you were talking about I keep going back to your zorb but you know the zorb is really small and 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 we get more in a tangle and there's more confusion and and in that place we're more susceptible to kind of listening to or paying attention to the that inner critic voice but I think the learning here is is kind of discerning between the quality of when we feel we're in a good state of mind and have clarity and and where we and where we feel um you know less resourced and um maybe in a state of more chaotic thinking and and if we start to sort of discern the difference between there well chances are if you're feeling a little bit like we talk about shaking up snow globe and stuff you know very often the, the inner critic voice will be more demanding and compelling from that place. You know, the, the reality is, is that wherever there's that kind of judgmental, <laughs> um, insecure um, righteousness, um, you know, chances are it's that, uh, but, you know, the, the, that, that's the quality of our inner critic. I don't We're know. at the top of the hour. Ah. Yeah, we could go on for hours, couldn't we? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no, I think I think uh, uh, as always, you can you can tell that we are learning live or growing live, as as you said, Rach. But I think I think for me, what's what's really stuck is kind of thinking about where where we go from here is 
starting off with a bit of that self-reflection and sussing out the the lay of the land like what what's what's going on for us right now and what what feels warm and what what maybe doesn't where is there kind of the word friction comes to mind where where do things not feel quite right and is that maybe maybe an indication that that boundaries might be needed in in that area or are we saying yes all the time without even realizing it and I think I think starting from that place of exploration and self-awareness is, is so important and doing that completely judgment free as well and then things like taking that pause and Rach's filtering system just really simple things that just allow us to take take a moment and reflect and tune into us and our bodies and our feelings because they are they are the ultimate guide really trying to think things through usually is really unhelpful <laughs> actually going with our gut that if something doesn't feel quite right it's usually because it's not right for us in that moment so allowing us the the space to actually start to figure some of that stuff out and allowing ourselves to come off that autopilot that we've been on for so long and kind of taking taking back control of the the wheel and making making choices that we want to make rather than feeling that we we have to or that we're obliged to because we're so afraid of letting other people's people down or not meeting their expectations so I think yeah I think we could talk about this for hours but yeah I think there's certainly for me there's there's a lot more to to explore and and learn here so I think it's just a big thank you for thank you for joining or listening if you're watching this back um and yeah we will we will see you for the next one.